The Custom Shape tool provides Photoshop users with a slew of preset shapes to choose from. Be careful when using them though. If you have quick, easy access to them, so does every other Photoshop user. If you use them often and without modification, your final design may not look personalized. We'd recommend always modifying them in some way to make them your own. Once the Custom Shape tool is selected via the Tools panel, the Options bar will display a Shape drop-down menu to choose custom shapes. There will be a few by default. Others can be added. Use the Options flyout menu on the Shape drop-down to add additional shapes to shape libraries. Appending libraries like Nature, Web, Talking Bubbles, and Music will add them to the shapes currently available. Selecting OK instead of Append will replace the current shapes with a new library. And just on a personal note, I'd recommend probably not doing that um, because usually you just want to add to what's available. The shapes shown on this slide represent just a few of the stock custom shapes currently available in Photoshop. We've added fill and stroke colors to these so you can see them, but they ultimately revert back to paths if all attributes like color are removed. The thin black lines surrounding the clover, car, and rabbit represent the path that was used to create the shape. The small black dots are anchor points used to construct the path. The red circle and purple splat are not currently displayed are not currently displayed um, on these features, but they still exist. They have simply been deselected. If we were to select the shape again in Photoshop, the path and anchor points would reappear. Remember, anchor points and directional lines remain fully editable for all of time. You can always go back to a vector art file, reactivate the path and anchor points, and then edit the shape. So Jessica, would you mind demoing making custom shapes for us? I can do that as well. So the custom shape works just like the basic shapes that we demoed in the last video. Um, the only difference is that they're, they're more fun, I would suppose. And so this little squiggly amoeba shape it represents the custom shape. And if you select that from your tools panel, you're going to follow the same steps that we followed when we created the basic shape. So you'll select the custom shape tool. Before you do anything, you have to make a decision about what you're actually creating. And so on the options bar up here in the top left hand corner of the screen, you can choose to make a shape, a path, or pixels. We're going to stick with shapes for now. Uh, you can change the color of what you're creating. And then over here on the right hand side, there's a shape drop down and you can choose I'm going to go ahead and reset my shapes so that you can see the default. And so you can choose some of these preset shapes that are available to you um, by default as soon as you log into Photoshop. And again, they are determined by the version of Photoshop I'm using, and so these could be slightly different from what you see. If you don't like what you see and you want more options, you can always append or add to what's available. And so if you hit the option flyout menu on the shape drop down, you can choose to add all of the shapes or some of them. So you could say, I want to add a talking bubble. And when you do that, let's zoom out a little bit. When you do that, you'll be asked, do you want to select OK and it will replace the existing ones? Or if let's do the grime pack, um, if you append, it will add to what's available. And so what I usually do is I'll just append as, as I'm using them because I don't use them that often. I don't have a million uh, custom shapes. But once you find what you want, maybe it's this guy here, you're going to click and drag just like you would for your basic shapes. But instead of making a circle or an ellipse or a rectangle, you're going to make a custom shape. And just like I said, with the basic shapes, if you hold shift, it will constrain the aspect ratio. So right now I'm skewing this little square icon thing. If I press shift, it will only allow it to be a square because the original part of the shape was a square. Let's grab a custom shape that's not a square so you can see how the aspect ratio would be constrained. And so this guy here is long and skinny but I could distort him if I wanted to. If you press shift, it will not allow you to stretch or squeeze the picture or the shape. It will simply allow you to make it bigger or smaller, but the aspect ratio or the ratio between the width and the height remains the same, so the image doesn't look distorted when you're done. 